Management Authority and other partners started a second day of workshop geared at devising strategies for stronger protection of manatees in Belize. But what they weren't expecting was for a dead manatee to crash their meeting. The death of the manatee today perhaps underscores the immediate need for measures to be implemented to protect this endangered species. Just after 9 this morning, a young male manatee washed up behind a coastal zone management building. He had been chopped several times by a boat's propeller. It's sad, ironic but sad that they came here today while we were actually sitting in the conference room discussing measures to put in place for the next five years if you want to protect these endangered species as we watch them die off weekly. And this guy shows up here with ma major chop wounds. Kind of ironic, I mean, it, it is, it, there's some positive to it in that people actually in there are seeing the effects that, that we're talking about. Every, every other week we're talking about these issues and now it's live for them to see for themselves. And sometimes people don't really understand until they see it themselves. It is a male, um, an adult male, still still young though, not, a, not an old male. And they had some serious, serious chop wounds. I, no animal would survive that chop wounds. Um, the chop wounds penetrated into the cavity, broken bones I can see without even, without even carrying out an examination. The tail almost completely taken off. The animal would have probably died within minutes after, after being hit. You know? And it, like I said, it's coincidental. It washed up at our work site. And we, we can't, I can't, I can't, um, I can't exaggerate anymore to both is how the need for them to slow down because these guys are gentle moving animals. And it's deaths like this one that has moved conservationists to advocate for greater measures. One place where that starts is with the updating of the Manatee Recovery Plan. It has been over 15 years since it has last been revised. The purpose is to update an existing Manatee Recovery Plan. The last time the Coastal Zone Management Authority led this process was in 1998. And so, as you can imagine, um, it, this plan is long overdue. And what we want to do um, is to address the threats that are facing manatees and to look at strategies that we had um, put together in 1998 to do a rapid assessment of the progress of meeting those strategies back then and to look at the new circumstances today and what new strategies we need to put forward in order to address shortcomings in our management. Management that is urgently needed for a species that is extinct in other parts of the world. Today, Belize has the healthiest population in this region. But that may not be for very long. Last year alone, 34 manatees were killed. Today, halfway into the year, we have surpassed that number. The Antillian manatee is an endangered species on the IUCN red list. And in the wider Caribbean region, there is an estimated population of 2,500 individuals remaining. Of this amount, Belize arguably has um, the largest population, with 1,000 individuals um, estimated in our coastal waters. So if we don't act now to protect these um, animals, if we don't act now to protect the habitats that support these species, we run the risk of, extinct, of having these species become extinct. This means a lot to me. I mean, like you mentioned, we have advocated for so many years about these issues, and it's finally been addressed. I personally am fear that that I may live to actually see these animals go extinct if it continues the way it is going at the moment. That is currently number 35, I think. We're halfway through the year last, we had 34. This is major concern for these endangered species. So to prevent that risk, CEO Samuels and partners at the Oak Foundation enlisted the help of technical experts from Mexico to chart a way forward. They bring a wealth of technical expertise and um, experience from navigating a similar process um, in Mexico. And we use a specific software, the Meirari software, and they introduce a conceptual model so that we could look at what our conservation targets are in terms of the species itself and the um, habitats that um, support manatees and to input um, all of our rich technical discussions from the National Manatee Working Group and that helped us to prioritize um, um, our strategies. So do we focus on um, watercraft collisions, do we focus on enforcement, or if we say we need to engage um, a wider um, audience, then 
how do we um, disseminate targeted messages. So those are some of the things that came out. Today we want to focus on the results chain. If we are saying these are the strategies that are needed to address manatee conservation and protection issues, what do we hope to see by the end of, of five years? We're looking at key areas where manatees hang out and what, what is it that they, they actually do in these areas and the threats that are in those areas that affect these animals in specific areas. So we're looking, we're limiting the, with the threats. Um, Literally, both coastal development, dredging, destruction of coastal development, like I said, um, gill nets is a problem as well. We know that it is a problem. People do catch man and these in nets to hunt. Um, all those issues, we are trying to see how we can carefully address them. And with education and awareness as well, not necessarily um, laws and regulations, but man and these do need to be stronger protected by the government, by the laws. The laws currently are not strong enough for, for, to protect these animals at this, at this state now. Reporting for News 5, I'm Andrea Paul.